uh, up north. Andy Nash, the former chairman of Somerset County Cricket Club, is in the studio with me. Andy, thanks again for uh, for coming in. Appreciate your time. Uh, let's talk about the future of, in particular, county cricket. We know this 100-ball tournament is coming in. This is something that the ECB has planned. It's different to T20. It's shorter. So instead of 120 balls each way, it's just 100 balls. What impact do you think this tournament will have? Well, potentially it's a disastrous impact, and that just isn't my view. You've seen the strength of feeling against it, which is almost universal from the loyal fans who are being told they're not needed, uh, to you know almost every uh, cricket journalist who's come out in uh, in in some way, shape, or form um, against it. And you but said it, just to pick you up on the loyal fans thing there. So this has come from a quote where the ECB said they were looking for a new set of fans, that this, this new tournament was with new teams, not the traditional counties, and that they weren't aiming it towards the traditional county supporters. Yeah, well, it, it's, not, uh, it's not good business practice to slap your loyal fans in the face and tell them they're not wanted. And one of the problems with this is that the uh, traditional three formats of the game uh, will be moved to the margins of the season. This tournament is planned to squat in, the mid, in July and August. Uh, at eight test match grounds and uh, the rest of the game is going to miss out. But I would la actually put it more positively than that, which is that we're missing, and you know, cricket's really under pressure, as is soccer, as is uh, both forms of rugby, to other leisure pursuits, uh, and none more so than in an online gaming, for mm -hmm. example. Um, cricket has four heaven-sent opportunities at the moment. You've got the Blast with a million fans uh, attending. Uh, it's a really working. The 50-over game, where we are the reigning world champions in the women's game, and we're hosting the World Cup next year, and we've spent the last 10 years trying to make sure we win it. We are now the world number one in the ODI format. Um, the championship, since streaming has been launched, an innovation led by Somerset, happy to say, um, we've seen astonishing numbers following the county championship. It's a sleeping giant. Now, those opportunities are all going to be missed because the, the national governing body, the ECB, is entirely focused on this one new tournament called the 100. So it isn't just the fact that you know people like myself, but, but people who follow the game far more intently than me, ex-players and so on, are deeply worried about the damage it's going to do. We're missing out on the obvious opportunity of backing the three current formats and getting really getting behind women's cricket. You know, these are once in a generation opportunities that the game is going to miss because it's got its ladder up against the wrong wall. Well, the ECB has um, said so the reason it's trying to bring this in is because it sees an opportunity for a, uh, a boost in funding. But part of this deal with the, this new tournament is a 1.1 billion billion pound deal. I mean, that is such a lot of money for cricket, isn't it? I know football's been up there and around and much higher than that for a long old time now, but for cricket, 1.1 billion is unheard of, isn't it, with this broadcasting deal that'll last for five years? I have to I have to just step in there and say how much of that 1.1 billion is being paid for the new competition, the 100? 30-something million. That's all. So they're paying for the T20? They're paying for the T20, they're paying for the England uh, test matches, they're paying for the, uh, the rights for county championship and they're paying for ODIs uh, and the 50. But they feel that this will attract, this, just to quote from the ECB, attract a wider audience, so they're looking to reach out to non-cricket fans, which is sort of we, we touched on earlier. Uh, a younger audience clearly is important if the game's going to survive. Um, they also say it's a, a five-week window in the middle of the summer which will showcase cricket at these major venues. Can you see that cricket would be in the limelight much more because of this new competition? I'm afraid you know, I don't accept those arguments and uh, the reasons for that are, are, are this. I mean, of your listeners who are tuned in this evening, look at how they follow their sport, both here in the West Country and also more broadly through the UK. We are very tribal and we're very loyal to our sports brands. The major West Country sports brands, you know, Somerset County Cricket Club, 1875, Gloucestershire County Cricket Club, 1870, Yeovil Town Football Club, 1901, Exeter uh, Rugby Club, now the Chiefs, uh, 1870. They're all well over 100 years old. That is how people mm. follow sport in the UK. There is, however, a direct analogy which you can take from what's happened to rugby in Wales, where 15 professional clubs suddenly became uh, initially six and now five franchises. And 
Uh, don't take my word for it, but a certain Dr. J.P.R. Williams has done several write-ups, one of it describing the effect as a total disaster, and I quote. That doesn't necessarily mean that cricket will, will or the ECB will do it in the same fashion. Perhaps they can learn from what rugby did in Wales if, if, they, if there has been this problem. Isn't there an opportunity here that, you, that, that if there's a chance, you should go for it, try it out? If it doesn't work, can't you just go back to what you had before? The opportunity is to get behind the three current formats, uh, as I mentioned er earlier. An enormous opportunity, and we run the real risk of, of losing those uh, by focusing on a, a new format that no one else plays, no one else is ever going to play. Vera Kohli's made that perfectly clear. <laughs> and there is no evidence whatsoever to support the view that this is going to recruit new fans to cricket. The evidence is to the contrary. It hasn't worked in other major sports and the evidence is it may well drive existing fans away from cricket. So um, I think it's a, uh, it, it's a, you know, some serious mistakes are being made in the assumptions as to what it might achieve. ECB, again, just to, to keep um, representing them. This is the chief exec, uh, Tom Harrison, who's saying it's a fresh, it's an exciting idea and it's different enough from what already exists that it won't necessarily muddy the waters between them and necessarily drive people away is as people will see it almost as a different sport to cricket because of because of how it will be broadcast of the way that players will talk about it where players will play it do you feel that that actually that it's so different that it doesn't matter necessarily if it goes wrong it's cricket's going to be i'll tell you i'll tell you anyway. why why it matters charlie because let's take the case of a test match ground and we'll pick we'll just let's just pick on sorry uh, who are a particularly powerful one and they're reigning champions what this means for the Surrey fans and their members is that in sometime during July, they will hand over the keys to the Oval. The players, the coaching staff and the management will all vacate the Oval and hand over to a new, a new team who are representing a, a new brand. And they will decamp to Guildford. And that's where they will play their cricket for a six or probably seven week period. So the Surrey members, if they want to see any cricket at all, the only thing available to them in the six peak weeks of the season will be to watch a 50 over tournament on outgrounds that will be contested without the top 96 to 100 players uh, in the country they could go to the new tournament though could go and see that team that's taken on the oval but with respect we were five minutes ago you were telling me from another ecb quote that they're looking for a complete to attract mm -hmm. a completely new audience and uh, but that's look this isn't just my view whether you look at what Vic Marks or Syl Berry, uh, Matthew Engel, um, uh, Paul Newman, I mean, they have all come out with really hard-hitting criticism of what an existential threat this is to the domestic game uh, here in England and Wales. So let's let's take a, a hypothetical situation now that it does come in, which, which it almost certainly will do now. We're at a, we're at a point where it's almost... Uh, no going back, isn't there? Would you would you agree with that? No, I don't agree with that you, at all. Do you, the, 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 realistically, the, do you the think po the point of no return will be when the fixture list is right. issued for 2020, and that'll happen in November next year? Do you think there's a, the ball is rolling enough? The ECB are, are so likely to continue with this. Let me give you a very powerful reason why I think that isn't necessarily the case. Um, the most important role of any director or trustee for the organisation or company that they represent is to do no harm. If you are planning what is a very high risk uh, venture, and it would be impossible to argue that the 100 is not a high risk venture, but given the vast weight of evidence that suggest and criticism of it thus far, so you have to assume it's high risk, you're going to have to carry out a full risk assurance uh, process. Now that means unleashing somebody at the scale of a PwC, Deloitte's, KPMG in probably a study costing quarter to half a million mm -hmm. pounds to identify the risks, to quantify those risks and to come up with plans to mitigate them. And at the moment, I don't believe, and neither do a great deal of other people currently in cricket administration and within the media following cricket, that those risks can be satisfactorily mitigated. Because, and let me just give you uh, two that spring to mind. If the blast is cannibalised, because the blast is going to have to move to the front of the season, and it won't be played in a block, it'll be interspersed amongst two championship matches, so you won't be get attracting marquee players. Early season, 
weather's going to be different, so you're not going to be getting balmy June evenings at the county ground, you know, with, with uh, 10,000 people rammed in. Attendances are going to fall. If the, the blast is the single biggest contributor of the counties in terms of maintaining their financial well-being, if the blast is cannibalised, all of the counties are going to be in financial difficulty. And while we're on the subject of finance, we've now seen the ECB have to admit that the costs of the 100 have already tripled to 40 million. It's not going to make any money at all in the first year or two. And you have to say, you know, compared again to the low risk alternatives, you know, why does it make sense? So in summary, the risk assurance will have to be carried out because if you don't do that when you're running a national governing body or a major company, you know, it's the equivalent of jumping out of an aircraft without a parachute on mm. and hoping for the best. So they will have to carry out that exercise. And I think it'll be an enormous challenge for the tournament such as it currently is uh, to be able to pass muster against those uh, potential problems. OK, so potentially we might see changes come in in the next uh, year. We'll see what what happens with that they'll have to uh, to work that out for themselves but you were in a position within the ecb where you you could have had a, a say on this you resigned actually over partly this partly to do with with different finances as well we won't go into that necessarily tonight it's a slightly different story but you resigned mm. over the way the ecb was being run really uh do you not think it would have been a stronger position to be within that board and having what you're saying to me tonight and being able to say that to the director and the, and the chairman well, I was within the board for uh, between five and six years, so I gave it a pretty good go. Uh, I, I hardly bailed out at the first whiff mm. of cordite, uh, and indeed served the game for 14 years in total. So, you know, for the v most part, you know, really enjoyed it. There are challenging times. But, but haven't uh, you come out of it just at the key moment? You're telling me all these reasons why the 100 is a bad thing for the sport. You, you've come out of it just at this point where the ECB... Would, would need someone to, to be that voice of what you would call reason to, to say, actually, no, hang on a minute, let's not spend all this money and risk everything? I think there are voices within ECB who are saying much the same as me. Okay. I know there are. Um, I now feel I can be uh, a more passionate advocate for another way of running the game, being outside the ECB rather than inside it. And, uh, you know, the cricket is a very fast-flowing river. You know, things will change. Um, and, you know, there are other, other people like myself who served the game for a very long time who would be happy to do so again in the future if the opportunity arose. We'll see. What, uh, say it does go uh, well at the 100 ball competition, it's a success, people go to it, players are attracted to it. What is the worst situation you see for county cricket in that situation? Won't they just get the benefits of all that money coming into the game? They've been promised more than a million pounds each, all of the 18 counties. So is that a good thing, all that money? No. Uh, it's not a good, if it's this is the problem with it. Even if it succeeds, it's going to end in disaster for the uh, the smaller counties like Somerset. Why? Uh, because only eight grounds uh, are going to feature. Um, they are going to drive a, a a very disproportionate share of the revenue of the competition for hosting it, and you can't blame them for that. Um, but the 10 of the 18 grounds will not be hosts. And do you think that that will always be the case? They'll only ever focus on the same eight grounds. Yes, because if you look at what, uh, what's happening in Australia and, and India, uh, it, they're basing these type of tournaments around the, uh, you know, the major urban mm. centres. Which, you know, so, it makes so, sense, doesn't it, to have it I in mean, the biggest place? Take the BBC. I mean, you are a regional organisation. You're going to be participating with free-to-air coverage, which on the face of it sounds great, except here in the West Country, where you three regions, not one of them will see a single 100, host a single 100 fixture. So you know, the furthest west in the south of England that this tournament will go is Southampton. So the whole of the Southwest Peninsula will, will see no 100 whatsoever. And here's the problem. The eight hosts will become wealthier, and bigger and more powerful, and that the agents will see that, the players will see that, they'll act as a magnet for talent. And I think the evidence suggests what will happen to the professional game in, in uh, England and Wales is that we won't sustain 18 counties. So the smaller counties, the non-test match grounds, I fear in that situation will face a, a semi-professional future because no matter what money is com comes in, you may as well pay Somerset double that amount of money and just, just concrete over the square and turn it into a car park because the, we won't have the cricket to host. Fans 
would keep going though to Somerset, wouldn't they? There's enough of a of a group support in Somerset to keep supporting Championship and T20s, even without the the major players. So on the current schedule, as we understand it, yes, there will be Championship cricket, albeit that many people are unhappy about the new asymmetric plan of that, and you will, you'll no longer play each side twice in the first division, so the integrity has been compromised. The blast won't be. You know the force it is at the moment taking place peak season to sellouts. It'll move to the front of the season and will be played in and amongst the county championship. The 50 is completely defenestrated. It becomes a semi-professional, basically tournament played alongside the hundred. That is the only cricket that will be available for Somerset members uh, in the peak season. That's it. Other than that, the other two, the other competitions will run at the margins of the season. Well, let's take in the other side of the argument now. So the, the 100 ball tournament happens, much to the ECB's uh, sadness. It doesn't work. People don't go to it. The, the broadcasters don't want it anymore. What is the impact then on county cricket? Uh, equally devastating. Right. Because that's probably the worst of all worlds because what will then happen is that the, and you've referred to it earlier, ECB did a really good job on the renegotiation of the media rights and it's increased uh, fourfold to about 1.1 billion as you mentioned earlier i mean that's a significant achievement the problem is and we've seen this again in other sports uh, that was a result of, of sky competing with bt market conditions were in were in favor and a really good deal re resulted also the new competition was part of that part of the attraction and which brought the bbc in if the tournament fails in failing, it will still have inflicted damage on the other three competitions. It can't not do so because of the way they've moved in terms of the fixture list. If it fails, the next media deal won't be anything like 1.1 billion. It'll be a fraction of that with a new owner, Comcast, and BT no longer in the fray. That will that will herald a massive financial crisis. But you did say they were only only paying thirty million for out of the one point one billion. It was only thirty million for yeah. the the new tournament. So Indeed. where they just knock that thirty million. Okay, there's less competition, so it won't get to, to quite that high. But won't they then still say, well, look, we've, they've restructured it back as it was. This is still good cricket. We still get the tests. There's there's still a good deal to be done there for cricket, even if it fails. We will be dealing with Comcast, who are a uh, an, you know a global. American-owned global corporation, they are going to use every means at their disposal to increase uh, value from their own point of view, and they won't have BT bidding head-to-head -head against them. We've already seen the reduction in rights in other major sports as BT has pulled back, as you, as you know, and in it, if we let our partners down with a failure on the 100, they're going to take full advantage, and we, we cricket will pick up the bill for that. Mm. And that's probably you know, as great a concern as, as any. I feel we've gone quite quite deep there. We're looking into the future uh, a little bit as well with those. Um, it's great to hear your thoughts on it, Andy. I know that it sounds a little bit um, problematic. Things have a way of working out as well. Let's see how things go. We are still looking into the future, but it is um, really interesting to hear your thoughts. Before we let you go, um, you left Somerset, what, about a year ago? At the end of last season? I, uh, like that, was at it? the January AGM. So, so it's coming up to a year since yeah. you've been parted yeah. from, uh, from Somerset. It's, do you regret it? Do you wish you were still part of it, looking watching last season? No, no regrets no? at all. It was an immense privilege to serve the club for 14 years, 10 of which was as chairman. But you shouldn't serve longer than nine or 10 years in a role like that. You should that need to let someone else have the, uh, the privilege and the enjoyment of doing it. So I've no regrets. It was one of the most fulfilling periods of my working life. Um, although my, my position was an honorary one, which is a posh way of saying it's unpaid. <laughs> so uh, my normal day job is I'm, I'm a chairman of, of other companies and uh, I, I continue um, to do that and, uh, and will continue to do that so long as, uh, uh, so long as it's possible to do so.